Okay, uh, thanks a lot. Actually, thanks a lot for Tong's uh, brief introduction to digital twin and save my son time. Um, so together with uh, uh, Bob Su, we are working towards uh, digital twin of soil plant system. And this is currently supported by uh, two uh, projects, Eco Extreme Mail and the Wonder. So Eco Extreme Mail representing uh, accelerating process understanding for ecosystem functioning under extreme climate with physics aware machine learning. Maybe Raul does not like this physics aware, but we will <laughs> talk about that later. And water, uh, Wonder is about the water use and the drought response of agriculture and the nature ecosystem in the Netherlands. Uh, but before I go into uh, details on how we are going to build this digital twin of soil plant system, I would like to spend some slides to introduce our motivation and then um, explain some relevant concept. Um, so actually in the past few weeks, um, not today, you may find that this winter is actually quite comfortable in terms of temperature. Uh, well, we know it is not the normal, but we didn't pay much attention to it. But in fact, actually in Europe, we just experienced the winter heat wave. Uh, if you see here, seven countries actually uh, break their air temperature record on New Year's Day. And in the Netherlands, you can see the air temperature reaches almost 17 degrees. And this will, of course, bring consequences. So as, as WMO said, Okay, the uh, warm winter breaks the record, but also breaks skiers' hearts. And then there are many uh, ski resorts have to close because of the shortage of uh, snow. And also this abnormal wing, uh, a warm winter actually also confuses the plant. So you can already spot this time uh, of the year some flowering in the park of the, uh, uh, in the Amsterdam. But also in my garden, you, I'm really surprised by the green up and uh, the uh, flowering. And this is an image from Sentinel-2 um, and actually captured the out of uh, town, which is in Swiss uh, uh, Alps. And it was uh, usually minus two, minus four degree, but now it's 19.5 degree um, on New Year's Day. So you may be wondering how this kind of a winter heat wave will bring uh, impact on water energy uh, cycles, for example, or, or, uh, or budget. So uh, this is kind of connecting to Tom's talk on destination Earth. So in order to, let's say, monitor and anticipate the, the effects of uh, extreme climate on our planet, the European Commission launched this destination Earth program, which is briefly here. So the Destination Earth or Destiny aims to develop a highly accurate digital model of Earth to monitor the effects of uh, natural and human activity on our planet, like anticipate extreme events like extreme climate, but also a double policy to uh, climate related challenges. And it is to create a digital replica of our planet as uh, Tom mentioned, and then X-ray is also another word, which is a digital twin of Earth. So it's to create a digital twin of Earth for the green transition. Uh, Tom already mentioned uh, briefly what does it mean by uh, digital twin Earth here. I would like to explain a little bit more. Um, and this is uh, towards the uh, green transition is because this destination Earth, of course, is part of the green deal and digital strategy. So before explaining uh, what is the digital twin earth, I would like to use this video to actually explain what is a digital twin in general. You try it, right? Uh, I think you need to choose the second option. Close it, open it again. Uh, close oh. the PowerPoint completely. Completely? Yeah. Here? Yeah? Uh, I think, let me see. Yes. Okay, now no, it's okay.
okay, it's really nice music. I'm sorry I have to stop it here. Um, but there's a brief summary from the previous video. Uh, digital Twin is a digital uh, representation of product or process that is built using real-time sensor data and algorithm. Uh, it can virtually predict everything uh, that will happen in the physical world and then providing insights for future planning and the development. And then it allows testing and the better understanding of the product in the early stage as such you can minimize the downtime and the reducing the cost. And then what is a digital twin earth? It's, it's actually, uh, it's actually digital, digital twin earth is the advanced earth system simulation fused with a continuous flow of observation to create the most accurate digital replica and it is driven by high performance computing. And a little bit closer look at the definition of a digital twin earth is actually almost identical to the definition or let's say general definition of digital twin. So for example, we have a real world data from across earth. This can be referred to real time uh, sensor data and then the dynamic models of earth system is referred to our algorithm. And then the earth system simulation of the past, present and the future can provide insights for future planning and development, for example, based on different climate scenarios. And then this also allows testing uh, different scenarios to provide better understanding of the Earth future in our early stage. As such, uh, the digital twin Earth can create a better uh, future, for example, um, through anticipating the extreme climate. And then as such, this is linked to minimizing the downtime and reducing the cost. So the digital twin uh, engine or the digital twin uh, Earth itself actually can be represented by this very simple diagram. It includes basically two parts. So the observation data of the physical space, the digital twin itself, so Earth system model, and then the digital twin can digest this observation data to provide the optimized estimate of the information process of the physical uh, twin. And this is basically claiming that the data assimilation is the core of digital twin Earth. Uh, the data assimilation is illustrated by this diagram. So for the model, for the digital twin, without assimilating observation, for example, which it is called background, and if you compare this, uh, this part with those uh, observed reality, you can see there is certain deviation there. However, if you assimilating the Earth observation data, for example, then you can provide analysis, which is much uh, better matching with the observed, uh, let's say, uh, physical uh, space. So this so-called digital twin engine, of course, is not uh, only about data, uh, data assimilation. It includes uh, many uh, perspectives. For example, the high-performance computing, data handling, uh, simulation observation fusion. This is the uh, data assimilation part. And then you have a machine learning, uh, complex pro uh, process optimization standard digital twin interface. So if you have such kind of uh, software infrastructure uh, template, you actually can empower more digital things, yeah? So for example, uh, currently ECMWF is working on digital things linked to climate change adaptation and also weather induced and geophysical extremes, but there are more coming uh, after um, this proof concept being in the place. And now let's move to digital twin of soil plan uh, system. So briefly, uh, the motivation again. Uh, this picture actually shows the operation system for the agricultural water management in the Netherlands, which is very straightforward. So when there's too much water, you just pump out. Yeah? So you can see all these pumping station across the Netherlands. And then when it is too little water, we irrigate. This operation system is working very fine in the normal years. However, in the past uh, dry years, consecutive uh, drought events, yeah? since 2018, 19, 20, 20, and also 21, actually. Um, this operation system is not functioning very well anymore, particularly when there is an irrigation ban combined with uh, the fact that the drinking water company is continuously extracting groundwater. So in short, the, um, the irrigation ban and the uh, continuous groundwater extraction makes the agriculture sector in the Netherlands suffering the loss. 
And lately, actually, the uh, Farmer Association, the LTO Netherlands, team up with the SDW Foundation, they established this legal framework for compensation for drought damage, and they are going to initiate a collective lawsuit for the settlement of uh, this uh, uh, compensation. And they are using, actually, national hydrological model to identify the potential regions impacted by this drought damage. Like it became suddenly very important to understand what's the accuracy of this model simulation and how realistic uh, this model can reflect the drought damage. So it's basically calling for uh, a soil plant digital twin to calculate better the drought damage. This is another slide explaining our motivation. So uh, this is about observation data we get during the uh, exceptionally hot days in July 2019 for 24th till 26th at the Spielboss station. So as you can see here, this is air temperature, and we can see for these three days, the air temperature reaches 35 or exceeding uh, 35 uh, degrees. And during these hot days, we can see the evapotranspiration remain very, very high. However, if we look at the nighttime CO2 uh, uptake, actually, the nighttime CO2 uh, uptake has been diminished, and also the nighttime increased respiration is not compensated, which means briefly from this figure, the forest yeah, turned from a carbon sink into a carbon source. Then the question here is how often such kind of shifting will occur in future, yeah? considering the past very hot years and the climate projection says uh, such kind of hot weather will be uh, more frequent, then we really have good reasons to worry about it. Yeah? Forest usually should be the carbon sink, should not be a carbon source. Okay, so we are going to develop a soil plant digital twin to address these um, science questions. So we know the drought heat wave will impact ecosystem functioning, and then we'll jeopardize the uh, uh, ecosystem carbon sequestration. And then we're trying to, using, uh, trying to use this uh, soil plant digital twin to control the drought response of ecosystem and how this, will, how this uh, drought response will vary in space and time. And uh, in these two uh, projects, so I will briefly, because I'm almost approaching the time limit. So the one the project briefly is on understanding water use and the drought response of agriculture and ecosystem in the Netherlands. And we have a bigger consortium, uh, consists of seven partners from university and knowledge institutes, four co-founders, two organized, uh, government organizations, three water boards. And then we also have a private uh, companies, two of them are co-founders. And uh, we work with the different farmer associations, including uh, traditional crop farming, but also food support, which is agroforestry. Uh, very innovative kind of uh, farming. And then here in Buren, uh, we have uh, ecological driven farming. So you combine the crop and the livestock farming. And we want to see how this different agriculture ecosystem will respond to drought. Uh, the uh, second project, Eco Extreme Mail, we also have uh, uh, many um, team members. So uh, briefly, at ITC, we uh, mainly focus on process understanding and machine learning perspective. And then we have a group of uh, postdoc and PhD students working on different components of a soil plant uh, system. But we are also using CLIP as a computing platform. And then we have a group of eScience Center uh, colleagues provide us eScience solution and uh, access to HPC facility. So together, we're creating this digital twin of a uh, soil plant uh, system. Um, to build this system, actually, you need mainly three parts. So you couple soil and the plant model for a digital representation of the system, but then you're also using the physics-aware machine learning to approximate the coupled model because the physics-based model uh, is really time-consuming, and then with the emulator uh, built by machine learning algorithm, it will be much faster. And then we also will incorporate the data simulation uh, to incorporate the Earth observation data, as mentioned before. Data simulation is actually the core of the digital twin engine. This is just a kind of a diagram, uh, give you more details into those three parts. And the idea is you represent this physical soil plant system with the models, and then you're using uh, machine learning to develop, uh, let's say, forward emulator, but also to develop inverse uh, uh, emulator 
for retrieve uh, certain geophysical variables and parameters using Earth observation data at the different platforms. Uh, but then let us just reconceptualize how to do that. You also need a digital infrastructure to support this uh, ambition. And the like eScience Center is helping us to build this digital uh, twin following the FAIR principles. So all the data will be open, including the software. And then the software, of course, it itself is actually not open at all. It is a mud lab, but then they helped us to uh, use container, Docker, basically, and then you can make, uh, expose it to basic model interface, so make it a kind of a standard uh, digital twin interface. Um, it is basically three parts. So external data source, including the model inputs, uh, forcing data, the Earth observation data, but also the server itself hosting the um, front end. And then you have a pre-processor, post-processor, and then the last very important one is the container, which enable one to build such a kind of a digital twin with a reproducible uh, man. So some message here for you to take home or just to leave here. Uh, but what I want to say is that digital twin is a digital replica of the physical process or state, and it is continue, uh, continually updated with a real-time observation. And data assimilation is very important. It is the core of the digital twin engine because it combines observation and uh, uh, physical um, uh, based model. And then if we have this digital twin uh, infrastructure template, then we can have many more digital twins. Thanks. I will stop here. Thank you very much. Uh, Jan, uh, maybe we can take one very quick question. Uh, thank you. Um, there was a lot of lot of detail, but uh, I just want to pick up something that uh, came up to my mind. You said in one sentence that uh, eventually, if you make a good digital uh, twin, uh, you could predict almost everything. Uh, but of course, there's a tier of chaos, right? And um, um, maybe maybe we should rephrase that and say we, we don't we cannot predict. I mean, we cannot even we can take all the computer in the world. And we wouldn't be able to predict what will be, you know, temperature in uh, July, August, you yeah, know, because yeah. it can be little oscillations, and we could kind of see maybe this year will be a bit warmer, a bit cooler. I don't know. Um, so maybe we should say that we don't want, we're not going to predict everything, but we would like to simulate. We just want to simulate realistically, mm. credibly, yeah. the processes, and then expose people to scenarios. Yeah. Just a, a comment, a question, I don't know. But you never mentioned tier of chaos in your... Thanks talk. a lot, but I fully agree with you. I would say this is a beautiful dream huh, to have predict everything. And uh, for example, currently in Earth system model, we don't have this uh, social uh, perspective. Uh, you, you have, for example, including this integrated assessment model, but then it's still at the very rough details. Yeah. So um, I fully agree with you. We cannot get the predict... Uh, everything, but let us the definition of the digital twin in in in, in industry. Yeah. So when you design an airplane, when you design the automotive, you really need to know all the details. So let us layer layer uh, definition. But then for digital twin Earth, this is a beautiful dream for us, for Earth scientists to to be able to predict everything, the interaction between Earth science and the social economic perspective. I'm not sure we'll ever be able. To. If we are, yeah. But uh, at least we have a dream. Yeah. Okay. Hope. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This case. I think Tom, you're sure we will know. <laughs> I think it's a better world if we cannot predict it. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the world is not determined. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, Listen, uh, sir. Sir, it is a very nice discussion topic. We can continue <laughs> during lunch time. So thank you very much. There's yeah. a question from. Bob, I think. Yeah, but we are over time. Oh, okay. Bob, uh, I'm very, very sorry for that. So we can really continue during during lunch. So our next...